the 99 Club, an exclusive club only reserved for the few, the proud, the 99 overall. When you jump on the sticks this July, look out for these guys that I'm about to share with you. Whether you're an ultimate teamer, a dynasty grinder, or honestly just trying to make it in Road to Glory, these could be your teammates or your competition. Did you know in NCAA 14 that there was only one 99 overall? That special spot was for Davion Clowney out of the University of South Carolina. Safe to say that man gave some people nightmares. Now in EA College Football 25, I predict there'll be three players that'll be 99 overall. And no, I'm not gonna just take the easy way out and give you the flashiest hyped up names. I don't just stop with 99. Towards the end of the video, I give you a handful of 98s as well. Three things real quick. Predicting ratings is difficult, especially in college football. There are so many unknowns. Breakout stars come and go within a season. And then, of course, there's always the fact that some stars from the previous college football season opt into the draft, in effect, dwindling our pool of 99 overall candidates. I evaluated players on four pieces of criteria. One, the expert opinion. Two, I averaged out many, many 2025 NFL mock drafts. And third, I'm giving away two copies of EA College Football 25 to my subscribers. I dove deep into the on three rankings pool in four in-game performance and game statistics. I did all of this so my opinion was at least rooted in something and I hopefully don't get roasted in the comment section down below. With that, let's reveal the first player. The first 99 overall in EA College Football 25 is General Booty from Oklahoma. Bruh. <laughs> Actually, though, the first 99 overall player is James Pierce Jr., an edge rusher from the University of Tennessee. If James Pierce Jr. were in the 2024 NFL draft class, he would have the highest pass rush pressure rate, over 21% among all edge defenders and defensive line prospects. He wasn't just great at bringing pressure, he finished as well, posting the highest sack rate of any power conference edge defender in the nation. A to Z Sports reports that Pierce, if he can just repeat or even exceed what he did in the 2023 season, well, he might just go on to be a better edge prospect than the recent NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, Will Anderson from Alabama. James Pierce is hitting a lot of expert All-American preseason watch lists. On3 reporters state that James Pierce reminds them a lot of Randy Gregory. Like Pierce, Gregory was a long, explosive, rangy pass rusher, one of the nation's top JUCO prospects coming out of Arizona Western College before heading over to Nebraska and, and racking up 17 and a half sacks in two seasons. Six foot five, 220 pounds out of high school. He's now six foot five, 242 for Tennessee. The only knack I might see people critiquing Pierce on is his size as 240 coming off the edge is a little bit small by NFL standards. But hey, maybe it's a compliment if he's this twitchy and can create so much havoc as he already does. The next man up that's also gonna crack the 99 club, in my opinion, is Will Campbell, offensive tackle from LSU. This guy is a monster at six foot six, 325 pounds. Many sources are citing him as the clear number one offensive tackle prospect going into the 2025 NFL draft. Fun fact for y'all is that Will Campbell didn't give up a single sack last season, despite quarterback Jaden Daniels getting sacked quite a bit. On three reporters say that this man is a big, light-footed offense alignment with nasty block finishing tendencies, was easily one of the top players coming out of high school as a clear five-star recruit. He has the athleticism to excel in the second level. Using his athleticism, his coordination, he seeks out linebackers in the run game. I'll admit it's hard to go on and on about an offense alignment, but this man's got the gifts. He's got the intangibles, the skills, the athleticism. He's got it all. He's a monster. He should be the highest rated offense alignment in college football 25. My third player that cracks into the 99 overall club is Will Johnson, cornerback from Michigan. It's extremely rare for a cornerback to go in the top three of an NFL draft, but that's exactly where Will Johnson is slotted to go in current state for 2025. Will Johnson is a rare talent, and according to Pro Football Focus, he allowed just a 29.1 passer rating to opposing quarterbacks, which, if you didn't know what that means, is just absolutely shutting down passing offenses that go against him. Receivers hauled in their target less than 45% of the time, meaning you have worse probability than a coin flip to catch the ball, and that doesn't mean what he'll do to you after catching the ball. <laughs> 
On many draft boards for 2025, he is the clear-cut cornerback one. Coming into Michigan, Will Johnson was a top performer at the Under Armour All-American game, and he stepped up in a big way as soon as his true freshman year at Michigan. How about playing as a high-quality cornerback and getting three picks in your true freshman year? Now that's nice. To top that even further, his sophomore season, the season that brought home the natty for Michigan fans, he actually posted four interceptions, including a big one in the championship game. The 6'2 corner from Detroit, Michigan, draws a lot of comparisons to NFL pros to the likes of Justin Simmons. National recruiting analyst from 24-7 Sports also compared him to the likes of Jimmy Smith from the Baltimore Ravens, stating he has an excellent combination of size, experience, and intelligence. But hey, I'm not done. This next batch of players are guys that I believe could be 98 overalls, if not crack the 99 club. First guy on my list brings a lot of hype with his name. It's Travis Hunter. Some people don't believe he's proven enough yet, but I think his skill set is dynamic enough and his athleticism is unparalleled that like that should just juice his ratings, like bump up his speed, his catching, his spectacular catching, his catching in traffic, his man coverage, his zone coverage, his press, like he's got receiver and DB traits. And that alone should like just take him like straight up to almost 99, if not a 99. A clear consensus five-star prospect at a high school, Travis Hunter idolized Deion Sanders primetime himself growing up. And Travis Hunter wants to be the next Deion Sanders as he's quoted saying, I want to be the next and I'm going to live up to it. An on three analyst states that Travis Hunter is the only prospect to have a comparison to two players. And on the receiving side, they remind him a lot of Justin Jefferson with his catch radius and shifty movements within the route. And then at DB, they compare him to Trayvon Diggs where both DBs are best, where they can sit back, read the quarterback, use their instincts, and take risks. Travis missed a few games last season due to injury, but he was still able to put up 720 yards, five touchdown catches, as well as three interceptions. I'm excited to see what this man can do in the next season. Next guy on my list that I believe will be a 98 overall, but has the stuff to also become a 99, is Luther Burden III. Fun fact for y'all, as a true sophomore, he posted a 99th percentile production profile, combining high volume dominance with efficiency better than any other second year college receiver in the country. He was a former five-star recruit and top overall receiver recruit in his class, and he's living up to the hype at Mizzou. Burden has literally made an instant impact for Mizzou, and in just this recent season, he posted 1,200 yards and nine touchdown catches. I remember watching him play my cats and just eating up our defense. On three, compares him to the likes of Debo Samuel. Burden is a threat to score anytime he touches that ball, whether it's catch and run, return man, or in some other gadget or manner, he will score from anywhere. He can make defenders miss. He can give them a mean stiffy. But ultimately, he's just got a unique skill set that would round out any team in the NFL. Another thing that I think is pretty neat about Burden is he has that go-prove-it mentality as he chose to stay in Missouri and go to Mizzou when all the other big-name St. Louis prospects always leave. They go to Georgia, Alabama, anywhere else, but he chose to stay and prove what he can do at Mizzou. I couldn't round out this list without Harold Perkins being there. LSU deploys this man in all kinds of formations. He's athletic enough to get to the quarterback off the edge. He's fast enough to play coverage against anyone, and he's strong enough to stop the run at the linebacker position. A recruiter evaluated Perkins, stating that he is one of the best run and hit linebacker prospects in the last handful of classes altogether. He's literally a guy that could play anywhere on defense, kind of like Micah Parsons in the NFL. He played safety. He played linebacker. He came off the edge. He did all of that in high school, and he's showing similar success at the collegiate level. They compare Perkins to Shaq Thompson, who was a first-round pick by the Panthers. Both Perkins and Shaq Thompson were in the same situation where they were dynamic defenders that were blazing fast, could hunt down the quarterback, but could also do it in a variety of different ways on the field. Perkins has been doing his thing over the last two seasons. He's racked up 13 sacks, six forced fumbles, and two interceptions to couple along with 146 tackles. I think he's a lock to go top 10 in the NFL draft. To round up this list, I wanted to include a quarterback, and I was thinking, who could be a 99, 98, 97? No, I, honestly, I don't think there'll be anyone like higher than a 95. 
And I was between two of them, Carson Beck from Georgia, but I ended up going with Quinn Ewers from Texas. I think he has a strong case to be the highest rated quarterback. I remember the Big 12 championship game this last season, and he cooked Oklahoma State for 452 yards and four touchdowns. And then how can we forget the big game in the beginning of the season against Alabama, dropping three touchdowns and 349 on their head? Ewers coming out of high school was touted as one of the best underclassmen quarterback prospects for the last few cycles. He skipped his senior season in order to graduate early from high school and enroll at Ohio State. He has elite accuracy and can place the football in small windows, has advanced timing. He throws the ball in advance in an anticipation for his receivers to go and make a play. He has that three quarters, the sidearm release, which, hey, that might be that slinger release that everyone loves from Madden. But hey, I think if he can take a step forward and develop his game even more, I believe he has what it takes to become a good pick in the NFL draft. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you want me to go deeper, conference by conference, team by team, giving you my EA College Football 25 overall predictions. If you enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button because I got plenty more on the way for you. It's been your boy King Sponge, and we out of here. He. Oh. I'm on my way, I'm coming